Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise. I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today we are here for episode four of my new wig wearer series. Gosh, we're already on episode four. I cannot even believe it. If you've been here for my other videos, thank you so much for following along with me during this series. If you're new, I am in the middle of a new wig wear series and I've already got three episodes filmed. If you go to the description box below, you will have a link to the playlist for this series and you can go and watch all the other videos anytime you want. Today, we're here to talk about how to put your wig on, how to adjust it, how to fit it, uh, not measuring your head, which I did in the last video, but just making sure that it's secure and different ways that you can secure your wig, things you can wear under your wig, all of that. So today is all about how to wear a wig, how to put a wig on, how to fit it. And I'm really excited to bring you this because I got to tell you guys, this was something I struggled with so much in the beginning. So if you want to know what I have to say about this topic, please stick around for the rest of this video. So we are going to begin this video with how to put a wig on. And I think this video is going to be a little bit shorter than all of my other videos, which might be a blessing because the other ones have been quite long. But I felt that the mechanics of wearing a wig deserved its own entire video because for me, that was one of the hardest things in the beginning. It was so... Uh, nerve wracking to try to figure out how in the world do I even wear a wig? And I struggled to find any information on this. Every time I watched a video, the reviewer would talk about the wig, they would show the wig, but they would never take the wig off on camera or put the wig on on camera. And so I didn't have any idea, do I need to wear a wig cap? You know what I mean by a wig cap? like these little cloth caps that come, or nylon, they're, they almost look like pantyhose, kind of more like these. They look like pantyhose that come in with some wigs sometimes. I didn't know, was I supposed to wear that on my head? What do I do? How do I fit it? How do I know if it's too tight? How do I even put it on? It was the worst. And I will never forget, Amber from Fabricating Fringe took her wig off on camera one time and put it back on and I started to cry. I literally started crying. I could not believe it. It was the best thing she could have done in that entire video. I do not even remember what wig she was reviewing. All I remember is she took the wig off and put it back on. I, and I commented in the video and I just said, you just gave me the best gift that you could have given me by showing me how you put your wig on. And that is why to this day, Whenever I do a wig review, I take my wig off on camera to show the cap and I put it back on on camera because I think just something as basic as putting a wig on is completely foreign to a new wig wearer and a stumbling block. So we're going to talk all about that today and I'm going to show you what I do how I adhere my wig, and some different options that you have. I really can't cover every single option there is out there for securing your wig, and I don't even probably own half of them, but I will show you what I know and talk about what maybe I don't own, and it's going to give you a place to start. So before we do that, though, I want to tell you that I am wearing Renee of Paris Shane in the color Melted Marshmallow. I have not reviewed Shane yet, and I'm loving it. I can't wait to get a review filmed of Shane. Super, super cute, short, sort of stacked, asymmetrical cut with a lace front and a mono part. Super cute. And for those of you who uh, know Ignite by John Renault, and if you like Ignite, Shane could be a really good option. Not heat friendly, Ignite's heat friendly, has a, a mono part. Ignite doesn't have a mono part. The biggest difference is shorter here. Ignite is much longer, probably down to here. So there's much more length in the front, but the rest of it is really similar. And Ignite has a ton of permatease and Shane doesn't. So 
for those of you who are curious. So let's just dive right into putting your wig on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab another wig. We're actually in my bedroom right now. And this is where I'm storing some of my wigs that I'm currently wearing in a future video. I think I've only got maybe two more videos in this new wig wear series. So in one of the next two, I'm going to show you how I store all of my wigs. And I'm also going to show you how I wash and care for them, but not today. So let me grab a wig for you guys. I want to grab a couple of different ones just so I can demonstrate with multiple wigs. I think that would be really helpful for you. Um, so the first thing you're going to do, let's take Shane off is, an, and I will show how to secure it and what to wear under it. But to start, I'm just going to show you the mechanics of putting a wig on your head. And then we'll talk about all those other things. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to, um, you don't know whether you need to cinch in the adjusters or not in the beginning. So unless you're familiar with your head size and how they uh, you know, wigs fit you, you'll probably start with the adjusters all the way out. So on a wig like Shane that has the pull adjusters like a bra, you'll just make sure you pull those adjusters all the way out to the, wide, the fullest they can be, and then you can start cinching them in from there. If you start it out with it cinched in, then it's kind of hard, you know, do I go, but you know, it's just easier if you start all the way out. And I would do that with the Velcro kind, everything. So now you will see people put their wigs on multiple ways. I, from what I've been able to gather, the majority of people dive into their wigs versus um, I've seen people, it's too hard to demonstrate with a shorter wig, but I've seen people with a lot longer wigs kind of take them from behind and sort of put them on from behind. That's really awkward to me and that doesn't work for me. But again, you're going to figure out what works for you. You're going to experiment and you're going to get to a place where you are comfortable. I promise you will. So what I do is I dive into the wig. So let's look at the wig. I'm going to take the wig from the nape and I'm going to hold on to the nape and then I'm just going to kind of lean forward and I'll do this with multiple lengths so that you can see how that works. And I'm going to put it against my forehead. So the lace front or whatever's on the front, you're going to sort of put it low on the forehead, just above your eyebrows. So you've got a lot of real estate there to hold on to the wig. And then I'm just going to pull it over the back of my head, just kind of pull it over and then I'm going to come up. Now, um, a, probably the best and safest way to then adjust it from there is to grab the ear tabs and you just kind of do this and you want to make sure the ear tabs are even with each other. And you'll, you'll get a sense of how that feels the more you do it. Then you're going to want to determine if it's in the right place in the front. A lot of people will warn you not to pull the hair in the front on a lace wig a lace front wig because you don't want to stretch out that lace front so you're gonna have to figure out what you're comfortable with i do for the purposes of adjusting the lace i do i try to remember to do the ear tabs for the major adjustment and then you can press them in so they squeeze in and then you don't have much adjusting to do here and you can kind of see where my hairline is and then i rest that lace right there and then you sort of pull it down in the back, make sure it's adjusted, fluff it, and you're good to go. How do you know where to fit it, where the lace or the front should lay is partly based on your forehead size and your hairline. The general rule of thumb is a forefinger from the very top of your eyebrows to your hairline, four fingers, and that's where it should go. I am just shy of four fingers here. Some people are only three fingers. Some people are a little more. You're, you'll figure it out, especially if you have a hairline, you're going to just kind of go right at the hairline. But if you don't have any hair at all, and you don't have that hairline for a visual, start with the four fingers and then say, does that look okay? Does it look like I have too much forehead? And then adjust from there. So let me grab a little bit. I don't have a super long wig up here, but let me grab a little bit of a longer wig. And again, I'm going to take the wig and I'm going to grab it by the nape. I'm going to do this, pull it down over the back of my neck, 
and then I'm going to kind of go up and I'm going to adjust it. I'll be honest with you guys. I'm not great about the ear tab adjusting. I usually do this and then I right away go and adjust. I'm going to try to teach you the right way. Do as I say, don't do as I do. Um, I really haven't ruined a lace front doing it my way, but I know it's kind of a no-no. So if you can just remember then to adjust by the ear tabs, get them even, just what both sides right kind of right near the front of your earlobe press them in and then you can you know sometimes just adjusting the ear tabs will get the front where it needs to be and then you can proceed to adjust it so the longer a wig is the more adjusting you're going to have to do because you've got you know the, the hair gets all messy when you sort of flip it up one more time so you're going to dive in you're going to go, see, I usually do, the longer the wig is, it's a little bit easier to grab onto the hair. Adjust the ear tabs. Kind of get a feeling for it. And usually the wig falls pretty good into place for me once I do that. But then you can just kind of look, and there you go. You have your wig adjusted. So this one is Girl Mono. This is one of my oldest wigs that I own. This Girl Mono is two and three quarters years old and um, has been worn a ton so much, like 90 times. I mean, she's just a workhorse, but definitely not looking like when I first got her. So that's how you put on your wig. It's just exactly like I showed you. you there are multiple ways you can try it, but really just dive in, pull it on, adjust the ear tabs, and make sure that you've got the right amount of forehead for your face shape. Okay, so hopefully that was clear and helpful. I think the hardest part of all of that is where do I rest the front? And that is try the four fingers. If you've got a hairline, then you just basically go to where that hairline is. The lace, the hair should be at your hairline. And then the lace, depending on whether it's a longer lace or a shorter lace, I have trimmed this lace. Um, should just be just right in front of that. So you shouldn't be able to see any of your hair through the lace front. If you can, when you go up close, let me see if I can, I've just recently buzzed my hair so it's not very long. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but if there are times when I'll have it back and I'll be able to see a little bit of my hairline right there, I know that wig is too far back and then I have to readjust it so that it's in the right spot. All right, guys. So that's how you put a wig on. In the next segment, I'll talk about what you can do to adhere your wig and what you might want to wear under your wig. All right, so you have multiple options when it comes to what you wear under your wig and how you adhere your wig. I will talk briefly about how to adjust, how you know how tight your wig should be, but that is gonna be a little bit dependent on whether or not you're going to put something under your wig or not. Now, I do not wear anything under my wigs. I don't wear a wig cap, I don't wear a wig grip. I just do not like any extra layers on my head. I run very hot all the time and the extra layers just really add to that heat. I also don't like the way it makes the wigs feel more snug on me. I do prefer my wigs to not be super tight. And I also find that when I wear a wig grip, the lace front doesn't lay super flat. I do struggle to get the lace front to be flat and flush on my head. So I choose to wear nothing. I know a lot of wig sisters who wear wig caps, wig grips, both. So you will experiment, you will figure out what will work for you. There is no right or wrong answer. But I will tell you, sometimes a wig cap can be really helpful if you find yourself getting super itchy when you are wearing wigs. That is something that can happen. You'll have to figure out if it's a certain cap. Sometimes I've heard certain brands are more itchy to people than others. So you're just gonna have to experiment. My caution to you is don't assume if one wig does something to you, every wig's gonna do that. It's really uh, can vary from wig to wig. So let's look at the caps to start. I've only got, I only grabbed a few just to show you some examples, but there are a lot of options out there for caps. You've got your fishnet type. 
and so it's like fishnet pantyhose um i've heard that these can be really good for breathability because there's all those holes in them uh you've got just your kind of basic nylon like pantyhose and i actually do have one of those out of a package so like pantyhose and you would put it on I feel like a, whenever I do that, I feel like a bank robber, you know, like the old movies, the bank robbers would put this over their face and then you just adjust it again, just slightly behind your hairline so that when you're putting your wig on, you can't see it. This one's quite, quite tight on me. What I find is wig caps usually want to fly off my head. They start to ride up in a way that a wig does not. I don't find them comfortable, but if you have a lot of bio hair that you need to uh, to contain, then you might want to consider finding a wig cap that will fit you comfortably. Because if you're wearing wigs more for fashion, not for medical reasons or hair loss reasons, and you have a lot of bio hair, that can sometimes be tricky to contain under wigs, especially if you want to wear a wig like Shane, the one I started this video with, um, because they can be really tight. Uh, the hair, the the hair can escape from the bottom, so you want to consider that. And a wig cap may be something you wear only with certain wigs. This wig cap is called a softy cap. It's just super smooth, soft, cottony type material. I actually don't have any idea. Oh, it's a John Renault softy. Um, I was going to say, I don't remember what it is, but the tag on here says John Renault. Uh, so I probably got it in one of my um, helper hair boxes that I have a subscription to. But yeah, this one's way better than a nylon. It feels so soft and comfortable. So if you find yourself um, really sensitive to wigs, if you have a wig with tons of permatease, permatease can cause your head to itch a little bit. I personally don't experience that, but I have heard that from many wig sisters. So if you are finding yourself extra sensitive to permatease or anything on a cap that's making you itch, you could consider trying a wig cap and see if that helps. I do have another solution though, which I'll tell you about, but let's just, uh, let me demonstrate for you. So I've got the wig, the softy on. It's also a good option if you are cold all the time and you want an extra layer, you could certainly consider that as opposed to having to wear a hat. But then I'm gonna put my wig on just like I showed you earlier and I'm gonna adjust it so my, this softy is going to have to go back further because I can see it. So, you know, this, you got to find a way to wear it so that it's not visible. The other thing I find with wig uh, caps and grips, with wigs with lace fronts and mono parts or mono tops, you can often see the line where that wig cap or wig grip starts. So it is something to consider. So put it on and now you've got it and you've got a nice layer between you and your wig and it's actually pretty comfortable. The softy is really comfortable compared to a nylon cap, which I really don't like. And another reason why you might want to wear a wig cap is because if you sweat a lot and you want a layer of absorption between you and your wig and sort of like men who wear t-shirts underneath their work shirts uh, and um, it could prevent you from having to maybe wash your wig so often if you are someone who sweats a lot in your head. So another reason why a wig cap may be something you want to try. So the next thing I'm going to show you, I'm trying to break these up into sections so that I can put timestamps in and then people can jump to the section that they want. So the next thing I'm going to show you after the pause is a wig grip. So stay tuned for the wig grips. Okay, so we're gonna do wig grips now. One thing I uh, neglected to mention in the other segment was when you're choosing a wig cap and when you're choosing a wig grip, you'll wanna make sure you're sensitive to the color that you're choosing. You're going to want to try to match the color of the cap um, if you're, or, or the hair. Um, if you're wearing dark brunettes, then you're gonna wanna make sure that you're gonna choose the darker color of wig cap or 
I have so many things on my dresser here or like a darker wig grip. So I have a whole lot of wig grips to show you guys and they come in multiple colors. You got light colors, you have dark browns. I even have a black color. So make sure you're getting the right color wig grip for the wigs that you're going to be wearing. And if you do switch your wigs up a lot, like I do, you're going to need to have multiple colors of wig grips. So I have so many because in the beginning, I didn't know if I was going to like wig grips. I do use them under my headband wigs. I like the security that it gives me with my headband wigs, and I don't mind the extra pressure from them with those, but I just don't like them with regular wigs. So let's talk about how you wear a wig grip and how you would choose which one of them to choose. So this one is one of the most common kind of wig grips. This one is actually... I believe it's a, oh, this was just kind of a generic one that I got from Amazon. And so these are often called velvet wig grips. And so they have like a velvety, a crushed velvet kind of material on them. And one side is smooth when you rub it. The other side is a little rough because it's going against the grain. And so you're going to want to put this on so that the against the grain goes back because you want your wig to be held on from slipping back with that grain. Does that make sense? They'll come with instructions and most of them will come with a label. Like this one says right side of head. I don't know if you can see that or not, but they'll come with some label or some instructions so you know which way to wear it. And they're and, um, generally Velcro. So you're just gonna put again behind your hairline because you don't wanna see it and then you're just gonna wrap it around and you're going to adjust it. And so the rough side is going back so that when I put my wig on, it's going to act as a anchor for that wig. And just make sure when you're wearing, and see it's even harder to adjust because it really holds it. Make sure when you put your wig on that you're looking behind in a mirror so you don't see that grip anywhere or that you didn't accidentally not pull the wig down all the way because sometimes it can be hard to pull down all the way and get stuck because that's the purpose of a wig grip is to kind of be sticky. And so you just want to make sure you're getting all the adjustment just like you normally would. You're gonna go up, I have some fiber in my, you're gonna go up and make sure you can't see it. So now that wig grip is way back there so that you can't see it. And that's what you want. This is a little bit of a darker wig grip for the wig that I have on. So that's what you want. So that's how you'll put a wig grip on. Now, right now, my wig feels incredibly secure and tight. And so that's my challenge with a wig grip. I don't know if the wig now feels tight on me or if it's just the wig grip squeezing my head. It's not a feeling that I relish, but I will tell you that some wig sisters love it because that feels like security to them. You just, the tight, this tightness is like, oh, my wig's not going anywhere. It's safe and it can add a measure of security. So, I mean, I definitely think wig grips have a place and a lot of women love them. So let me show you a couple of other options for wig grips because not every wig grip is for every person and they all kind of work differently. I really thought this video was going to be shorter, but I guess not. So this kind is just like a strip with like these rubbery sticky things. And this one is also has a Velcro. So you can, it's really Velcroed together. You can uh, put it on. It's very stretchy. So this could be really good if you've got, um, a bigger head it's super stretchy and as a matter of fact this one was so long I actually cut it so that I didn't have all that extra flap hanging off but this one can be really good if you don't want a thick uh, cloth wig grip but you want a little bit of security so this is a, a type you can get another type are silicone wig grips so this one is the wig fix and I do have a review of the wig fix on my channel. And so this one is silicone with these little nubs that help act as stoppers along with the silicone. And this, these work great. They can um, make you a little bit more sweaty with that silicone layer, but I've talked to wig sisters who couldn't get any wig grip to work for them at all until they tried a silicone wig grip. 
Another type of wig grip that you'll find are the kind that have the lace built in. So this one has lace so that you can put where you have your parting. You can do a mono part or a mono top. You put this on where you've got the part and then the wig grip won't show. That is the challenge I mentioned earlier with a wig cap, also a wig grip. If you've got a mono top or a mono part and you've got one that doesn't have the lace, it's laying across your head and wherever that part is, you risk seeing that line where it looks different than your scalp. So something like this would be awesome. They also make them, and I don't think I have one. They also make them with lace fronts. And so you could put that and have a little bit of a lace front. So um, the other thing that this one has, and I thought I had another one with it, but it's got this type of a back. So if you find a full wig grip to be too much of a layer and it makes your wigs too tight, because if a wig is already a little tight on you and you add a wig grip or a wig cap, that's just another layer, then the wig could become oppressively tight. So they do have ones like this that have just this little bit on the back and that can help eliminate that tightness, <clears throat> excuse me, tightness. So again, all the colors, all, there's so many choices, which, you know, it's like going to a restaurant and there's so too many choices and you don't know how to pick. It can be really challenging in the beginning, but you know, this is a, a marathon, not a sprint. It's a journey. And so you're journeying along and all along the path, you're learning what works best for you, what are your preferences, and what do you like. And then eventually you'll have learned enough that it won't be challenging anymore. But it is going to be a little difficult in the beginning because there's just so much to know. So the next section I'm going to talk about how you can adhere your wig if you need more security than a wig grip will give you, or if you choose not to wear a wig grip, but you don't feel comfortable just going with the wig on your hair head and nothing more. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so I have got a few different things to show you on how to adhere your wig. I personally use It Stays to hear my wig, adhere my wig pretty exclusively. And if I'm going to be out of the house for any extended period of time, or I just feel the need to have some extra security, then I will adhere my wig. When I was working outside the home, I always adhered my wig. Now that I haven't been working outside the home for 10, 12 hours a day, I find I go without adhering my wig quite often. They fit my head fine. I don't really have worry that it's just going to go flying off my head. I mean, some wigs are, you know, tighter than others, but I just, so you know, you don't have to use anything, uh, but I like It Stays. This is just one brand of It Stays. There are tons of different brands. I've tried at least four different brands. They all work similarly, in my opinion. I have not found any to be extremely different than any of the others. So I say buy what's on sale and save yourself a few pennies. A complaint I hear about It Stays a lot is the bottles leak and the, the It Stays gets on the outside of the bottle and this one has, it's all sticky. And that is a valid complaint. I've had a lot of my bottles leak. It is what it is. Just put it somewhere that it's, it's water soluble and wipes up super easy with a washcloth. So put it somewhere that you don't worry about it leaking. Get it a little Tupperware container or a little uh, like a saucer and set it in the saucer so that when it leaks, it's real easy to wash. That is something that I've experienced. The benefit of it stays far outweighs the fact that some of the bottles leak. And I do store mine upside down just to keep that roller ball always moving. And so those are just my tips. But I have a full video showing you how to adhere your wig with It Stays. So I'm not gonna demonstrate. It's a roller, like a roll-on deodorant. And you just roll it on, right on your hairline, a little bit on the uh, forehead, a little bit on the hair. And then once it's on, you just take your wig and you put your wig on. I didn't roll it on right now because I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm 
kind of explaining. And then you wear your wig. So watch my video if you want to know how to wear it stays. And guys, I just did what I told you I struggle with. I pulled my wig off by the front of the hair. That is not recommended. Again, I got into some real bad habits with my wigs and they're just, they've stuck. Um, better to take your wig off by the ear tabs just to avoid pulling and stretching that lace front. Um, okay, so another option for adhering is got to be. This is a, a blasting free spray by the brand got to be. Uh, the yellow can is real popular for that. They also make a have a black gel, uh, like a sculpt, sculpting gel that can work. I had I had trouble with that because it doesn't work as quickly as it stays. Um, this one is just a little bit more work. You kind of have to wait till it gets a little dry and then put the wig on. And sometimes it takes multiple layers. But this can be more secure than this if you really need extra security. I do have a video where I talk about some of these things. I don't think I really demonstrated the got to be. I can't quite remember if I have. I'll put that li I'll link in the description. Another option is tape. So this is Walker lace front tape. This is made to adhere wigs that have a lace front. It's double-sided tape. So the blue is just a backing. The tape is actually clear. This requires an adhesive remover to get it off. John Renault makes a good one. I do have a video on how to use this if you want to use tape. Um, great option if you're going to be swimming, if you're going to be at an amusement park, somewhere where you're getting super hot and sweaty because it stays is very water soluble and you get sweaty and it's going to release. So go watch that video about the Walker lace tape if you are curious about it, but there are multiple options for actually adhering your wig to you. And so these are three, I'm sure there's tons of others. Uh, again, experiment with what works out best for you. You'll eventually find your go-to, but there are lots and lots of options. So if one thing doesn't work, I am certain there will be something else that will. I just prefer it stays for the ease of not just using it, uh, but also of removing it, which I really appreciate at the end of the day, just a little bit of water and you get it off. So there are some options for adhering your wig. Let's move on. Okay, so we have pretty much covered all of the ways that you can put your wig on, adhere your wig, things that you can wear underneath your wig. And so I think the moral of the story of this video is the options are kind of endless and there's so many. So if, if you try something and it doesn't quite work for you, don't give up, try something else. Um, I think the kind of the final things I'd like to tell you, number one, I did forget to mention in the last segment with um, the different ways of adhering your wig is if you find your wig a little itchy, sometimes adhering it with its stays will eliminate that itch. It works for me. Oh, I'm getting sweaty and I'm melting. As usual in these videos, I look forward to the day when I don't just break out in a sweat randomly. If you are of a certain age, you know exactly what I mean. Um, it just hit me all of a sudden. Uh, if, uh, so anyway, if your wigs sometimes make you itchy, adhering with its stays can really help with that. I think the reason it helps is because it keeps, right now I don't have my wig adhered. And as I'm talking and I'm moving my head and I'm moving my jaw, my wig is shifting ever so imperceptibly, just minute little shifts that could cause some itching. And I have found sometimes I get itchy when I get hot or those kinds of things. And if I adhere my wig with its stays, it really helps that a lot. It eliminates those little movements. And I have been told by many wig sisters that that works for them as well. So either a wig cap, a wig grip, or adhering your wig can help if you find itching to be a little bit of an issue for you. And then as far as tightening your wig goes, just um, my best advice, first of all, is just, you know, do what you're comfortable with, but um, don't over tighten your wig. Don't think that the wig has to be almost cutting off your circulation to be secure. I think the opposite is true. The tighter your wig is, the less secure your wig is, and the more it will be apt to ride up in the back or shift around because 
um, it's squeezing too much and it doesn't have, uh, it, the, a little bit looser gives it some flexibility of movement and just allows it to sort of move naturally with your body. So um, really experiment with how tight it needs to be to be secure on you. I find generally that it doesn't need to be very tight at all. I mean, when I go to take a wig off, it comes off real easy, but it doesn't move on me. It doesn't feel like it's ever gonna fall off. So just play around with that. There's no hard and fast rule. But I do find that in the beginning, people think wigs need to be a lot tighter than they really do need to be. So be careful with that. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions for me, if I didn't cover something that you were hoping to see in this video, then please let me know. I'm happy to make another video in the future. I definitely will link any relevant videos I do have in the description below so that you can go, for example, watch how I actually put it stays on and how I remove it. And then if I realize I didn't have a video that I think could have been helpful, that's going to probably come in one of the next tip, tip Tuesdays, so stay tuned for that. And if you don't know, I do a Tip Tuesday most Tuesdays, and it's a wig wearing tip that's going to help make your wig wearing journey so much easier. Well, thank you for being here for another what turned out to be long video. I think this information is important. I hope you do too. And in the next video, I will, I think, be showing you how I care for my wigs and store my wigs, unless I think of something that makes more sense to come next. But that's the current plan. So stay tuned for the next segment. Uh, please subscribe to my channel if you appreciate this kind of content. And if there's any calling at all to support me in my journey to help my wig sisters and to do more of these kind of videos, please consider any kind of support. And I have listed some ideas in the description below. Thank you so much. And I'll talk to you guys soon.